we're back! Welcome back to Rizu Kids! I hope you enjoyed the summer of all of the reruns. We're going to get to do that again next summer, the Lord willing. But we're back and we're better than ever. I mean, gooder. Hopefully better than ever. We're going to have some new people joining us over the next few weeks and some old people joining us for the next few weeks. And I am so pumped to be back with you and also hopefully you get to come back into the church building sometime and go down to one of your classrooms and meet with a leader because we're ready to grow deep roots in Jesus Christ and that is what Rizu stands for is being deeply rooted and it's a new year and once again during the school year we're going to put out some new Rizu videos for all of you kids and families every day of the school year excuse me every Sunday of the school year except for the final Sunday of the month. That one is called Table Sunday, and we hope everybody will join us at the church for a special time on the final Sunday each month. So there won't be a Rizu Kids video during that time. But it's a brand new month and a brand new time, so we better jump right into it. Today, we're talking about tough trust. Let me see everybody's toughest face out there. <laughs> Do you guys, some of you guys remember Chuz from back in the day. He had a tough face. Let's see your tough face. <laughs> tough trust. Today we're going to be learning about what do you do when tough things happen. And we have a story for you to get to where some of you will remember and some of you won't. That's okay. You're going to meet new characters and new people. Nathan Lager and his friend Jerry are in a difficult situation. We're going to get to that story in just a moment, but first we have to get to the memory verse for this month and next month. So September and October, it comes from James 1, 2 through 4. James 1, 2 through 4. Today we'll just work on the first half and later on we'll get more. It goes like this, you ready? Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Let's do it one more time. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So we're going to learn about developing perseverance, how? Through the testing of our faith. So we better get to our story, and I'll see you on the other side. See you later. Oh. 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 Oh, my goodness. Why did we ever agree to come on this trip? If I was at home right now, I could be sitting in my hot tub. I could be sitting out in front of the sun and sipping root beer. And Oh, why did I ever agree to come with you, Nate? This is terrible. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. I can't believe I come to go on my very first mission trip in your helicopter, Nate and you just happened to put down at the one airport in the whole area where there's people that don't like us and they took us and threw us in this old boat and handcuffed us we're just trying to come and tell them about jesus don't they know that we don't have anything bad to do we haven't broken any laws this is completely terrible this is so awful and look at this they even ripped my good shirt. Oh, this is terrible. I, why did I ever agree to come with you on this mission trip in the first place, Nate? <laughs> Jerry, things, uh, things didn't turn out quite the way we thought, did they? I mean, look at that, they tore my shirt too. Man, well, I know Jerry, things look pretty bad right now, but I know God's up to something. He must have just, uh, you know, wanted to change our plans a little bit. <laughs> you know, Jerry, uh, it's funny how, you know, 
when I told you I was going to bring you on your very first mission trip and we were going to go over and tell some people that had never heard about Jesus, all about Jesus, well look, here we are. And this wasn't quite on the plans for the day, but I bet God's up to something, Jerry. You just wait and see. How could you possibly say something like that? I'm handcuffed here in this old boat. I'm stuck and can barely even move my feet. We don't even know if they're going to come back and feed us. We don't know what's going to happen. How can you say God could be up to something? I don't see God showing up right now. Well, yeah, you're right, Jerry. Uh, maybe we're stuck here and our feet are handcuffed, but at least we're not in stocks. What do you mean stocks? You mean like, like the stock market? I keep meaning to invest money in the stock market, but uh, I haven't ever gotten around to it. I don't mean those stocks, Jerry. Well, let me tell you what I'm thinking about. Remember Paul and Silas, those guys from the book of Acts? They were missionaries that went all over the world telling everybody about Jesus. Well, one day they had gone to a city named Philippi. And while they were walking through the city and checking things out and getting ready to tell people about Jesus, there was this little girl that kept coming up and following them and shouting, these are friends of God, friends of Jesus, friends of God, friends of Jesus. These people are and they kept going over, they kept following him around all day. Well, Paul, after a while, got annoyed with this little girl. He also knew something really sad. You see, this little girl was possessed by a demon. Something that terrible had happened to her at some point, and he knew that she was a slave, both on the outside and on the inside. And so after she had gone around all day yelling about to everybody, these people are children of God. These people are servants of God. And he, you know, he was, there was, she was getting in the way of him being able to really tell other people about Jesus. She was making a big scene and people were falling around. Some people were laughing. Some people were wondering what was going on. Well, finally, Paul got annoyed and he turned around and he said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. And that demon left her and the, for the first time in many years, that little girl was free. She was free of that demon and she was free to, in, of the slavery that she had been in. Well, this caused a big problem for the people that owned that little girl. Isn't that incredibly sad that in those days people would own a girl like a slave? You see, the owners of this little girl used her special skills and things to make lots of money off of her. People would come from miles around just to see her and, and to hear what she had to say. Even though it was terrible because it was bad for her and she was stuck as a slave, these people made money. And whenever they heard that Paul and Silas had cast a demon out of her, they knew, oh no, we lost our money. And they were ticked. They were super ticked. And even though Paul and Silas had come to help the people and tell them about Jesus, they came and the crowd of people that were there and they started yelling at Paul and Silas. And they didn't just stop with there, Jerry. They didn't just yell. They started dragging them through the streets and ripping their clothes off and beating them and beating them and beating them. And finally, the people that ruled the magistrates came and they said, what's going on here? What's going on? What are you doing? And those, that crowd of people said, these men over here are bad people. They're telling us to break the rules and do all sorts of things. Well, Jerry, they were lying. They didn't, Paul and Silas had done nothing like that. All they had done was helped this little girl. But the people made all sorts of false accusations about Paul and Silas and they beat him and the magistrates took him and threw him in the deepest, darkest prison and put their feet in stocks. All because... Paul and Silas had come to tell the people about Jesus. Wow, Nate, that, that is exactly like the story that we're in now. So they got thrown in prison? Their feet were put in stocks? Oh man, I bet they were upset. Well, I bet they were pretty upset, Jerry. You know, if this has happened, I mean, I've never been beat quite like that. I've been beat in some other ways before, but never quite as bad as they were beaten, especially for something that they didn't deserve at all. But here's the thing. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 16, do you know how they responded to all of that terrible stuff that happened to them and 
how unfair it was, and they didn't know what was going to happen. Just like we don't really know what's going to happen to us. The Bible shit tells us that they were there in the deepest, darkest part of the prison. Their feet were in stocks and they were stuck. But they were singing praises to the Lord. <laughs> they were singing praises to the Lord. And I bet the other prisoners were sitting there and everybody else had been just like you were feeling, Jerry, like mad and upset. And here's these guys and once the word got around of why were these guys in and they heard, wait, they're in here because they helped a little girl? And they had been beaten by the crowd and as the story spread through the prison and yet here these guys would sit in there and they were all listening because Paul and Silas we're in there singing praises to the Lord. I don't know what songs they were singing. I'd love to hear it. So they were just sitting there singing praises to the Lord because they trusted that even though they didn't like what had happened to them, they trusted that God was in control and that He knew what was going to happen to them. And they knew that, man, they sure didn't want to be in prison, but God had a plan and they were okay with whatever God's plan was. So here's the cool part, Jerry. As they were sitting there and they were singing and the jailer was out there and they had the people had told the jailer don't let these men out these are bad bad men well something happened that night now I don't think it was an accident there was a huge earthquake that night such a bad earthquake that all of the prison doors were open and the chains fell off. Now that's a quite an earthquake. It would have had to be going. Wow, I could use an earthquake about right now, but I don't know what kind of earthquake it would take to get these super tough handcuffs off. That would take a big earthquake, maybe a rock falling and shatter. I'll try to put it right here and wait for the earthquake. Can we pray for an earthquake right now, Nate? Well, I suppose we could pray for an earthquake. I don't know if that's God's plan for us or not. But that was God's plan for Paul and Silas that night. But guess what happened? The earthquake came, the doors opened up, the jailer who had been sleeping there because all of his prisoners were safely tucked away in their jails, opened his eyes and he realized what had happened, that all the doors were open and he just knew that all of the prisoners had escaped and his life was over. And he was just about to do something terrible when all of a sudden, Paul cried out, he said, no, we are all here. The jailer was shocked. What? What are they talking about? The jailer knew how the people had treated Paul and Silas. The jailer knew that Paul and Silas had done nothing wrong. And when the jailer had heard the beatings that had happened and seen everything that had happened, and he had been listening to Paul and Silas there singing praises to God whenever they should have been cursing and getting angry and upset. The jailer went into Paul and Silas and he fell at their feet because he knew there was something incredibly different about those men. And he fell at their feet and he said, Men, what must I do to become like you? What must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas told him. And not only that, they took the, the jailer, took Paul and Silas out of the jail and he took them to his house because he wanted the rest of his family to hear what these men had to say because they trusted God like nobody he had ever heard or seen or known before. And that night, Jerry, the whole family came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they were all baptized because of the trust and the faith of Paul and Silas that no matter what had happened to them, even though they were in a terrible situation in jail, they trusted God. And isn't it crazy? They had gone to tell people about Jesus. They weren't planning on going to jail that night. And God had other plans that resulted in people coming to know Jesus. So Jerry, I don't know what God's plan is for us right now. I didn't really want to be in prison. I didn't want to be, you know, in this handcuff in this old boat. I don't know what's going to happen next. But here's one thing I do know, that God is working. And I don't want to get in the way of God working. So let's see what God has in store. That is an amazing story. I love the fact that they went there to tell people about Jesus and they didn't think they were gonna do it from a prison cell, but that man who would have never in a million years known or heard about Jesus was changed because of how Paul and Silas were there in the prison simply singing and praising God because they trusted him.
I'm glad you told me that story, Nate, because I, I don't want to get in the way of what God has planned just because I'm upset about some handcuffs and an old boat and a, and a spider. There's spiders in here, Nate. <laughs> oh, Jerry, you sure never liked spiders, did you? Well, I don't know what God has planned on that little spider, but I know what God has planned for us. He wants us to tell people about Jesus and to keep trusting Him even when things get really hard. So let's see what God has in store for us today. Wow! Wasn't that a neat story? Crazy how Nate and Jerry were in the same situation that Paul and Silas were. Wasn't that amazing how God used a really difficult situation for Paul and Silas? I mean, I've never been beat and hurt and thrown in prison and unfairly treated like they were. Yet through all the whole thing, they were praising the Lord and trusting Him. Boy, that is something for me to work on. And I hope you can work on it this week. And if you're here at the church, as you go down to your classroom later on, I look forward to you learning about having tough trust in Jesus. We better pray and we better get you out of here. Jesus, we want to have tough trust in you today. We don't really like going through tough things, but I'm grateful that we get to go through everything with you as our Lord and Savior. Father, lead us and lead the children today to trust you even when things get really hard. And we look forward to what you were wanting to grow in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, someone will see you next week, and I'll see you later. Bye. Off the sunglasses because prisoners don't wear sunglasses, do they? No. I don't remember who that who's that. That was all backwards and that wasn't. And God pres the re <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>